gosh, it's so pretty out that I almost want to stop what I'm doing and take a look around. You know, enjoy the moment. Live in the now. Experience the reality of what's going on in my life today. Not what will happen tomorrow, for sufficient is the day and the evil thereof. And you know, Jesus warned us about that because there are challenges that you'll face in your life every day. Sometimes you'll go through the day and it'll be a wonderful day. It'll be exciting and wonderful and invigorating. It'll bring you alive. You'll see opportunities. You'll see those things that you want to do and you try to do and you'll accomplish them with great success. And some days you'll see that you need to postpone some of the activities that you chose to do because you need to discipline yourself in order to accomplish them because they're not done in one day. God knew that. And that's why he's arranged the day such as it is with a morning, a noon, and a night so that you can start things and you can work on them and you can complete them. But you shouldn't try to do more than what you're capable of doing or what you're able to do because sufficient is the day and the evil thereof. In other words, there are things that are also going to happen in your day that are not positive that aren't working out for your good. There are things that actually are coming against you to try to stop you from accomplishing the things that God wants you to learn, accomplish, and be a part of today. That's the evil thereof. Because, you see, evil works against the will of God. Evil is always that which separates you from God. Sin, we're told, separates you from God. But so does evil. Evil is its manifestation of an action by a power that is trying to manipulate you in a way to cause you to not do what God has said to do. And so evil works in a manifestation of those things that are happening in heaven that we cannot see. The principalities, the powers, the spiritual wickedness in high place. The spiritual wickedness in high places are those things that cause an effect on earth that we call evil. And those are the things that often move men's hearts and minds to do, perform, and act in a way that isn't pleasing in God's sight. And often we look at and call it evil. Violence is one of those things that often we try to justify and we try to make some excuse for. It. But the reality is we're meant to know peace, not violence. And so I find interesting when I stop in my day to pray. I find ways to realize what God may be wanting me to do and experience as opposed to what evil thereof may be happening in my day. So throughout your day today, if I may give you a word that perhaps might inspire you to take the day in its measure or to look at the day as measured out and portioned unto you for certain purposes and reasons to accomplish His will, then I would say take the time in your day to take prayer breaks, you know, conversational moments to talk to God about how your day is going. Because just like you need a coffee break sometimes, or if you're a smoker, a cigarette break, or some type of change of focus from what you're doing to what you are, back to what you're doing, in order to revitalize the feelings that you have inside to accomplish the purposes that God intended, then I would say to you today, choose wisely your break time, but also take the time to recharge your batteries spiritually, not just physically. Because the physiological needs of the body, obviously you can meet with coffee or with a power drink or however you choose to do it. But the spiritual needs of your internal organs, the internal part of you that you cannot see, the spiritual being that you are, that requires for you to participate in and in some way get the Word of God inside you. And when you do and you ask God to use that for you to your benefit, He will, by way of the Holy Spirit, take that word and make it spiritual nourishment to your soul and your spirit that you would keep in balance that you would be able to resist the fiery dots darts of the enemy who comes against you but 
not just because you're holding up a shield of faith, but because you have taken the time to let God be your focal point, your direction, your lodestar, your compass point, the one who's directing your life, as opposed to you being the object of your directions that you choose to do according to your will and not his. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Psalm 22:14. At least I'm pretty sure I'm looking at an XXII. <laughs> Our blessed Lord experienced a terrible sinking and melting of soul. The spirit of man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. Deep depression of spirit is the most grievous of all trials. All besides is as nothing. Well might the suffering Savior cry to his God, Be not far from me, for above all other seasons a man needs his God when his heart is melted within him because of heaviness. Believer, come near the cross this morning and humbly adore the King of Glory as having once been brought far lower in mental distress and inward anguish than any one among us and mark his fitness to become a faithful high priest who can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities when we are depressed. Especially that those of us whose sadness springs directly from the withdrawal of a present sense of our Father's love and enter into near and intimate communion with Jesus. He will not deny you. He will comfort you. Let us not give way to despair since through this dark room the Master has passed before us. Our souls may sometimes long and faint and thirst even to anguish to behold the light of the Lord's countenance. At such times let us stay ourselves with the sweet fact of the sympathy of our great High Priest. Our drops of sorrow may well be forgotten in the ocean of His grace, but how high ought our love to rise. Come in, O strong and deep love of Jesus, like the sea at the flood and spring tides. Cover all my powers. Drown all my sins. Wash out all my cares. Lift up my earthbound soul and float it right up to my Lord's feet. And there let me lie, a poor, broken shell, washed up by his love, having no virtue or value, and only venturing to whisper to him that if he will but put his ear to me, he will hear within my heart faint echoes of the vast waves of his own love, which have brought me where it is my delight to lie, even at his feet forever. When it comes to articulation, no one says it like Spurgeon, especially in the morning. But you know, we all will despair and find ourselves there where we may even contemplate suicide. There are those Christians who have thought of it or even tried it. I know for myself three times I came to the brink. Or three times? Twice that I remember. I, I can't think right now if there was three, but twice. And God was there. God stopped me. I mean, I would have because of the despair that I felt, the lack of hope, the Irregardless of the fact that I had heard God speak to me, it didn't matter whether or not that I knew God and that I was born again. The pain and the suffering had seemed to be so great that I could not endure for any longer. And at those times, in those moments, it was almost as though a song came to me, as though God had spoke to me, as though God had reached out and touched me. And in one, t in one miraculous instance, he did. The other one, I don't think so. I can't remember which one the second one was right now. But the first one, it was miraculously saved from my own actions that I was getting ready to contemplate to do, which was standing on the ledge of a building, getting ready to jump off headlong into the cement at Balboa Naval Hospital. And when I contemplated that, I knew that I would die. I mean, there was no question in my mind. It's just the thought of and the agony of going through those moments of dark depression challenged the person to the very core of their being till God brings them through the long night of despair into the light of his countenance even as the sun rises after the night for though sorrow may endure for but an evening joy cometh in the morning and so don't be surprised if you find that 
in someone's testimony they have those experiences of life that either they dealt with mental issues or physiological depressions that have come upon them because of some type of either biological process that caused their synapses in their brain to misfire or misconnect, or even if it be a spiritual battle that they're going through, that the challenges of eternality and the eternal life that God has given them is overwhelming them from the physical life that they're living currently. Sometimes those things happen, and those things will drive you to your knees and accept that God intervened. Some people do take their lives, and it doesn't mean that somebody dies from killing themselves, that they're not forgiven or that they're not a Christian or that they're not a saint, because God understands and knows those issues that have gone on in us, because in so choosing to die on the cross for us and to endure the suffering before that in the whippings and the beatings, Jesus was made more than aware of how we suffer, and he suffered more and yet still without sin was able to entrust his body, even in dying, to the one who would raise it from the dead, our Father. And that's where you have to come to a knowledge of God as your Father in order to endure sometimes the evil thereof, because though we do have a high priest, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has endured the sufferings that we're going through, sometimes you just need a Father's love to give you one big happy hug to remind you that, yes, you are valued more than you'll ever know. You are appreciated more than you realize, and God himself will open your eyes on the day that you die and bring you unto himself, even as he did for Jesus, as he will do for you. Thank you.